Hey folks, uh, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be going over my editing workflow since a lot of people wanted to know how the DxO fit into that workflow. So that's what we're going to do today. So the very first thing I do is, of course, take the picture. After that, get your SD card. And this uh, For the R5, it's a CF Express. In the uh, R7, I use a 300 megabyte writing uh, SD2 card. So after you got those, you're going to put them in your computer. So what I use for my editing, which is a really nice machine, is this M1 MacBook Pro from Apple. And it has a card reader in the side for an SD, but not for the CF Express. So you have to get a specific reader for your CF Express cards, which are 1700 on write speed, which is really fast and really nice. And the two drives I use, I use a SanDisk Extreme or a Samsung T7. So they write, I think, at 1,000 megabytes a second, which is really, really nice. If I don't throw it across the room, that is. So after I've got that, I put the disk in, the laptop, and then I transfer up the SSD. So how do I have my SSD organized? Because yeah, organization to me is key. So what I have is I have four different files. These extra middle ones are just the drive installers and stuff. So I have an audio file, which is like the DJI mic that I use to record audio. The DxO folder is the post-processed raw images. The raw folder is the CR3 files, the photo images. And the video, of course, is the MP4s that come out of the camera. That's how I have that organized. And how I have those folders there organized from there is I do them by date. And sometimes I'll tag it with what it is. Like on the 19th here, I did some normal photography. But that evening when I went out, I think I did the Fox in the morning. And that night I went out and did the Aurora, so I have the two folders. And then even this one on uh, March 6th, there's two different Aurora folders on 13th. Um, so anyway, that's kind of how I have it organized by date and, or, or by subject sometimes. After I've got the photos downloaded to the hard drive, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use an application called Fast Draw Viewer. So what it is is a really fast way for me to call my images. If you go into Lightroom and try to call it, it takes a while from go to picture to picture. It's not extremely fast. It takes a second to load the preview. Even though the previews are already downloaded and on the machine, it takes a while to grab the next one. Fast Draw Viewer, they open instantly. You can cycle through these just like a movie by holding the arrows down. It'll just go to the next one instantly. The other thing I like about it, as you'll see here, if I click any image, what well, it's going to give me, it's going to give me the histogram at the top. I can make this a little bigger if I want. And also tell me if I'm underexposed or overexposed. And it tells me that I'm a little underexposed, which is perfect. It's what I like. It'll also give you the ability to add in all the camera information you want to know, anything you want to know about the camera. And you can add and remove items just by clicking this gear icon here. And then go down here, X, X, I, F, D, F, whatever that is. And then here you can put anything. You can put what the GPS information the camera was, the extended lens data, just anything. I add just the aperture, shutter, ISO, all the basic stuff. Um, but it's got a lot of different items in here you can show in this area, which is really good. Uh, and these are just things I have. I basically say what my shutter speed, my ISO, you know, what my white balance was, all those type of things, what type of lens, what type of camera. Makes a real good look at a glance. Now we got all that out of the way. How do you use this application to call your images? Well, it's very, very simple. You open up your image, you glance through them. Now, you'll see right here, you see a ton of noise on this one because it's a 10,640 ISO. This is not a real pixel peeping application to say how does it, you know, the colors aren't great, the noise is kind of rough on it. But all this is is for me to way to go through the images real quickly and call them to go, okay, is that out of whack from what I know? Is it out of focus? Is the comp completely wrong and I can't crop it to get the comp? This is the way real quick you do a first pass and do what I call reject images to toss them in a trash can but not lose them. And how do you do that? What you do is you right click the image and you go down here and move to rejected in your menu. And what that does, we'll just do one for starters, click move to rejected. Now if you look in this folder, you'll see there is a rejected folder created inside the folder you're in with these images wrapped. So what it does is takes the root file that that image is in, creates a new folder called rejected, and you can just start putting files in there. They don't disappear, they just go to a new folder. So now when you open your drive, let me do that real quick. I navigate down to the raw, I navigate down to that folder. Now I see a rejected folder and all these. So now all I have to do is grab all these files to process instead of processing everything. You know, I have a rejected folder. 
And that's the first part. See, it's that file we just rejected is right there. All right. Let's go back to the fast draw viewer. What we're going to do is just going to go through all those we would reject. You know, I'm just going to reject these. I don't like them. Uh, one, there's something in her face. This fox. Oh, she's a beautiful fox. Um, it is a underexposed, uh, and it just, I think I recover it, but it's just not interesting, so I'm just going to dump it. Before, I had a lot of images I normally wouldn't keep when we're doing reviews of, like, the ISO. Now I'm starting to look at things I want to keep. And, like, this one, just go through the reasons I'd reject things. Okay, her face. She's not facing me. No face. Face pose. Same thing here. Still no face. Still no face. And now I got motion blur. So I'm shooting one four hundredth because it was dark. It was like five o'clock in the morning. There wasn't any light to speak of. And uh, 10,000 ISO. And it, but it's, it's out of focus. She's not looking toward me. So I'm going to do reject it. So we get in here now. She's actually facing me. I've got my camera because I'm laying on the ground and it's a little, not quite straight. So I have to straighten this image out. But uh, this is kind of cute. I would probably not reject this. Let me look. So what you can do, you can hit Command Plus, and I, I, don't, I don't know what it is on the Windows machine if you're using this application. But anyway, I can zoom in. And it'll tell you in here, uh, View, where's the zoom? Zoom right here. If you click that and you go over to Zoom, it tells you what it is. For, for Windows, it'll be something different. Probably, the, I don't know, uh, probably, well, it may be the Command button. No, I don't know. But anyway, Command Plus is what it does on the Mac. So I can come in here and I can zoom in to see was the eye sharp. Now this is, this application really shows you the noise like horrible. So let's just ignore the noise in this application. All you're looking through in this application is, am I in focus? Do the eyes look like they're not emotion blur or anything? Let me shrink this up so I can look at all this a little bigger. All right, so we'll keep that one. Leg pose, I'll keep, 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 keep. And that's what I'll do. I'll just look at all these and go and you know, what I do a lot of times is zoom in on the eye. I see motion blur in that one, not in that one. These are really were bad when I first took the first shots of this girl today. And, you know, like this one, I was just taking it because I have a friend out there that was shooting. I was trying to get him and the fox in the same photo just for, for him. Again, I reject. Um, she's facing away. Reject again. That's all I'll do. I just go through and just get rid of all the images I do not want. That one probably reject. I don't like it. I mean, it's not not horrible, but you know, the eyes, she's squinting. Um, I've got a hundred shots like this, so I don't really care about it. If she was doing something a little more interesting, I noticed it looked like it cleaned up more in it because I dropped down to eight 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 thousand and dropped my shutter speed a little bit more. And there she is looking at me. You know, these I may keep. Um, but, you know, I have a bunch of shots that are like that. Now she decides she's going to go run up on us when I was out there. Sometimes she'll get close. There's a little, little wobble in the camera. That's the wobble and that's the non-wobble. That's what I'll do. I'll just go through and reject these images and there's another wobble. But the reason you're seeing wobble in that rolling shutter as we've talked a hundred times, on the Canon R5, you had the same exact wobble, same exact stuff but you're shooting at like seven to 12 frames a second. And with this, you're shooting 15 to 30. So what you're doing is you have a bigger sample size. So if you drive to work 100 times or drive to work two times, and you go to work two times and there's no issue, but you do it 100 times and you got 10 issues, you're seeing, you th oh, I got more issues when I'm driving to work with, say they're two different cars. You know, one, you drive twice to work, one, you drive 100 times to work, one, you drive 100 times to work, you've had issues, one, you drove two times, you have had issues. So your tendency says, I don't have a sample size on the two, but it looks good. The one over here looks bad, but it's not, because it's only like five times it's happened out of 100, so it's not that bad. That's what's happening here with this camera. You're shooting 30 frames a second, so you're seeing more instances of wobble than you saw before when you're shooting 12 frames a second. So it's a sample size thing. But the, the, I tell you, the rolling shutter is exactly the same on the R5. I didn't see any difference in the two when I've, I've tested it. Anyway, we go through all these images, and we will, you know, reject and do all that fun stuff and this was a fun it was a fun day with this fox this morning she came close to us on this trail and she just was just very very cooperative today and just, she's so pretty and I just had fun just getting thoughts of her and there's a lot of them i have to reject in here Ooh, Lord. that's a mouth anyway now that's one thing i do so i'll run through first and i'll do all the reject i'll just reject all the ones i don't want 
And then I'll make a second pass and I'll probably do the same thing. Because a lot of times I have, like this one, I have like 800 images, I think. Uh, 702 plus rejected, probably 15 or 20. So almost 800 images I got this morning, which is kind of a low shoot for me. A lot of times, and I didn't spend very long. I was only out there 45 minutes or so. But if I'm out there several hours, I could shoot two to 4,000 images. Depends on what's going on and how good it is. And I have to call them. So I'll call them once and I'll call them a second time. The third time I go through, and what I'm going to do is I may start to categorize them. Now, these were all foxes. But it's, let's say I had fox and I had some uh, stellar jays or something. What I can do is I can actually right-click this image, and I can go move to, and I can, I already, if I already have a folder set up, which is what I should set up instead of folder or start with, but I can create a folder. So I can go to new subfolder, and it's going to create it, and we're going to call this um, Fox. Uh, we'll give it the date, 6, sorry, 8, 6, 22. And we'll click OK. So after you've done that, you said, hey, go to the Fox. Let's look and make sure that that file ended up where it needed to be. And what you'll see is here, we can, it's got rejected. You can sort it, and there's that Fox folder, and there's that picture. So what's really cool about this is you can organize your files really quickly with this. Right-click it. If you already got it already set up, you can say select folder. Go out here. There's the Fox folder. You can just hit open, and you hit boom, and it dropped it in that folder or you can reject it. So real quickly, I can go through all these images, I can do it. Now also, you can star these images. So if you right click it and go to rating, you can give it a star. So let's say, let's give this a three star. Go to the next several, find one you like, and say, okay, I wanna give this one a four star. We go right click, rating, four star. So again, to reiterate, what I do with Fast Draw Viewer, I go through my images, I do two sweeps. One sweep to do the first initial rejection, the ones I do not want, I go through again and reject them again. And then I'll come through after that, I'll go and either rate them, which I don't have to do here, but if I do see one I really like to rate, because I'm going to do my ratings really in Lightroom, not here. But if I see one I really like, and I'm going through these, and I'm like, oh, that image is just, is just phenomenal. That's one I really love. Let's go ahead and give it a rating of whatever. You know, we don't really want to pin it. You can also give it a label. You can give it colors. So if you say, I want all my foxes to be red, I can label them red. See down here at the bottom? Now it's red. So even here I can go look at them. And let's say I want to make this, um, let's go find one over here. So we'll take that one there. And we say, okay, I want to give it a rating. We'll give it a four. And you'll see the ratings are down here too. So really cool. All right, so once I'm done with that, I've done all my calling, which is that's what I've done, we're doing here. I'm basically calling them and organizing them into the folders I want. So now we're going to close Fast Draw Viewer. But again, Histogram, you can see that. Don't worry about the noise in here because it's going to look horrendous no matter what you're doing. So close it. Now we go into the thing that most people are asking about, the DxO Pure Raw 2. So as it's opening, here we go. This program is extremely, extremely easy to use. And again, you've heard me say a hundred times why I use this because if you go from your CR3 from your drive right into Lightroom, it looks horrible. It's not I, like I said, I almost got rid of the R5 when I first got it because the files looked horrible. All the other guys that I know that I watch, and you guys watch too, the Jan Wagner, Dwayne Patton, uh, all those guys, except for Jared, he doesn't process anything through that. But we do a little different photography than Jared does. Um, so that's what this application do is. What it's going to do, it's going to do like DPP4 does. It's going to bring your files into, it's going to use that Canon profile it's going to tackle the noise and the colors and the contrast and all that the way Canon wants it to be. Because basically if you shoot JPEG, that's what Canon's saying. Here's what the color should like, look like with the processor. When you do RAW, it says, okay, here it is. This is for you to go ahead and do all this extra stuff that the Canon did, basically putting that file together for you in JPEG. Now, how do we open these up? Real simple. We open the application. We can do several things. We can drag and drop them from a folder. Um, or you can just click a button. You can click it up here, you can click it down here. So we're going to click it here. This is going to open up whatever it sees, you know, it's to the last place. So we're going to navigate to our, um, our drive. So I go to my hard drive, there's my T7 drive, open it up. I'm going to open up that raw folder, and we're going to look for that 8622, it's right here. Now we're just going to use the Fox folder. So we're going to click the Fox one. And so basically in here, it's just going to be those files. So you click that Fox file, click it, and click open. Then you're going to highlight all your images. Real quickly, you can do Control-A or whatever. We're going to click open. 
So it's going to load these in here with a little small simple profile. You can double click them and open them, but it's not a big deal. So now you've got these are all checked with the ones you want to process. You can uncheck them or check them if you want to, you know, if you, but I'm going to process all six of these. So what you're going to do is you're going to click process photos. So as you open up the process photos, you're going to first think method, you can have the method, the first one. D primes the most AI attack of the photo, primes a little less, H keys a little less. So if you get here and do D prime, you see it's doing more than you want to, back it off one, back off that. I never had to. D prime for me always has worked. The next thing you're going to see is the DXO optical corrections. These you can turn off by clicking that or you can click either one of them. I know there's a few folks that said they turn off the sharpening and the distortion turn these off. I leave them on. Um, I haven't seen yet, yet was a prime example. I haven't seen yet it mess anything up. If it ever does, I'll come in here and back it off because I ran it with and without and I still like it with. So that's what you can do there. Then you come here to the format. I don't do anything in JPEG. I want it in DNG. I want the raw because what it's going to do is going to process and bring it back as a DNG, which is a raw file. So that's what I want. I want the raw file. Now, a bit about this real quick. When you take the CR3 to this, it's two to three times bigger when you get done. So be aware of that, that you're going to have a larger file. So you're going to have original raw file, plus you're going to have this much larger um, DNG file. It is bigger because it's applied a lot of stuff to it. All right, so I'm going to do DNG. I'm going to leave that checked. And then next you've got is um, you can leave it in the original folder, but I do custom folders. And what I do is I click Browse. I navigate back down to my drive again. There's my T7. And what I have, remember that DXO folder I had a while ago? I'm going to click that. I'm actually going to double click it so it opens up. Click a new folder. We're going to do this 8, 6, if I can type right, 8, 6, 22, create. And then I would do one more inside here, um, Fox, and create. So now what it's going to do, all those six files are going to process put inside this Fox folder. So we can click open. And that's the file renaming, which I don't do anything with. I just leave it where it is because it's going to get the image name with DXOD prime, which is nice because that's how I know what it is. I, you can change this to say processed or whatever you want to do to. Um, so I just leave it the default. So now all we have to do is click process. And a word about the processing. This uses your graphic card or whatever with these Apple M1 chips, the system on a chip, so it uses everything. Everything is available for RAM is available for it. When I use my, I've got a my a real nice Asus gaming laptop over here, and it takes quite a while. I think it was like 20 plus seconds to process, 25 seconds to process each photo. And I think it's 2080 card that's in here, NVIDIA, which is a nice card. I mean, it's, it's not a 3080, but you know, that's not, this is what it came with. With the, when I first used the D, D, a DXO Pure Raw on this laptop, and I first got it, it was taking about 10 to 12 seconds or, or maybe a little bit, maybe 15 seconds, what it was taking for this. Since they've updated it and, and enhanced for the M1 chips, these are taking six, around six seconds of pop, pop to process. So now let's click the process and get through it. So it's moving pretty fast, what I'm saying. And I think any of the M1, M2 chips will do the same. It should be about six seconds to process. Now let's click process. It takes a little bit to spin up and see now it's processing. See the little bar going here? What's going on right across? Tells you right here, these six, six one are going to take about 60 seconds. So it's, it's, it's estimating 10 seconds, but if you sit here and count it, 1,001, 1,002, whatever, it's about six to seven seconds, you're done. And the uh, R5 over here, the file is about the same. It's 32 versus 45. So it's just a touch longer with that. See, they're coming through pretty fast. Now, another reason I like this is while these files are processing, before I would go through and start, you know, I'm just going to down download them on the computer and walk away and process them later. But what would happen was I'd download them as I'm, as I'm pulling them over the computer. I'm starting to look at them, and I start trying to edit a few. When I do this, it, gives me, it makes me go walk away. Now, if I'm only doing six images, I'm going to stick here and, and edit these. But normally when I'm processing, you know, a few hundred, it may take a few minutes. So I can go get a drink, sit down, relax, and walk away from the computer because I've already been out shooting, probably pretty busy doing a lot of stuff. The last thing I want to do is sit and edit a bunch of pictures. Because I've already sat through them, called them all, organized them, and all that. All right, so now you can see that we said it's processing done. You can export it right to Lightroom or whatever. Uh, I just close all this stuff. It'll tell you where to go to it. You can tell what the results in case some of these failed. I've, I've had some fail a long time ago. Haven't had any failed long recently. 
I'm going to close that, and now I'm going to close DXO Pure Raw 2. 90% of my pre-processing before I go to Lightroom now is done. Wash my hands of all that. The next step is to open up Lightroom. All right, so now we're going to go import those files we had. Go to Library here, hit Import. So go there, there's my Fox folder. Click that, there's my six files. Now I hit Import. Uh, one of the things I do in import into Lightroom is you see I here do one-to-one -one previews. They are larger than the standard previews, but what you see in the preview is what you see in the develop module. Let's we'll just open this file here real quick. We'll just zoom in here. So I hit library or develop. It looks the same. If you would have done the uh, standard previews and you hit library and then you hit development, you probably saw times the colors will look different and the noise will look different because it's not the same exact shot. The, the standard previews are more like a JPEG preview. So that's what you get. Now as I look at this one, I can see this. the eyes were out of focus. So this image is a bit crap. This one here looks good. So I can still now that I don't like this image, I look at it, I don't like the eyes. I don't like them at all. Yes, you can go to Topaz, you can probably clean these eyes up. But I don't like doing that. Uh, if I missed them, I missed them. Get rid of it unless it's a unique shot. So I'm going to go here, right click it, hit remove, remove photo. And I'm going to delete it from disk, not just Lightroom, because I don't want the photo. I'm going to get rid of that, that idiot. I need to get rid of that file. All right, this one here, the eyes look a lot better. This yawn, this, it's hitting right in here. Didn't get her eyes, probably got her mouth or whatever. Didn't really hit where I wanted it to. But anyway, we'll look at this image real quick. And none of these are ones I would add in. I don't think I'd, I think the only ones I really would have kept were maybe the log shot, maybe I've got a bunch of those. And this yawn was cute, so I may try to fix that. But let's look at this image, okay? So the next step I do in here, I'm not going to go through all the little sliders. I'm going to slide around for that. I'm going to show you a pre-processing thing. So Canon has, now they have these color profiles. And they've always had them, but they've only had limited, like basically those. And you can come in here and you can apply to the monochrome, you know, like you've always done. Landscape always looks pretty good. on the, Out of all the ones that they have, landscape's one I like the best. But what I've done is uh, Jan Wegner has, and uh, Glenn Bartley, they have some, they call them Pro Sets. They're just these presets they've set up. And they work really good. Um, for this one, I'd probably go into the yellows. You can see this is what it looks like before I did anything to it. I'd go to his. And the yellow is vibrant. It's usually... The greens are a little toned down on this one. But it gives you a good starting point. You see, it really connect, corrects the exposure a little bit. Um, it adds the colors a little better, and I like it. Because the yellow's vibrant, really. The reds look good. They do have a tricky reds pack. Um, fiery, punchy, toned down. But I tend to like this yellow's vibrant the most. And most times I've used it. The greens are a little touch harsh, but I can always fix that. So that's my first tip is when you're processing is you can create your own. Here's the favorites Canon has, right? And I just closed that so I don't see them because I just want to look at Jan's. Um, I'm sorry, there's no raw. Um, and there's camera matching ones too here. This is Faithful Landscape Port. These ones Canon has that it uses. But I, I like these of Jan's. Uh, I've been using them probably on a survey picture. Um, you're welcome, Jan. I guess I'm trying to make some sales for you or something. I don't get paid for any of this stuff. I'm, I'm just a small time photographer like the rest of you. Anyway, this is the first thing I do is I come through and I'll click these uh, pre color presets. Here, the profiles, excuse me, color, the pro, color profile. So that's the first thing I do is I come in here and click these color profiles and set those in there. And from there, I'll go ahead and do whatever I need to do, you know, for any other color adjustments I want to do, uh, any exposures, sliders, things like that, masking. The masking in Lightroom is amazing. You just hit that, hit select subject. And for the most part, it usually look at grab the animal quite well. Um, and then you could come in and just do the animal if you want to just you know, you know if you want to do stuff on the animal only you could do all that fun stuff you know um, but yeah so anyway after I've done all my normal corrections to the image and that uh, redone my crop however I want to redo my crops you know whatever it is um, and then after I've got all that set there's times where I will take this and move it to Photoshop. You know, and, and, and go in there and edit the Photoshop in Photoshop, anything I need to do. And then my last step is to go to File, Export. 
take this image and put it somewhere. I have one I call web if I'm doing stuff for the, the web, like for Instagram, Photoshop, uh, even the YouTube videos, if I need to save the images there. Give them a custom name and I do them JPEG. I set them like 1500 by 1500 and sharpen them for the screen for the web. For print, I just take off this resize to fit and change the shop sharpening for the paper or just take the global output sharpening off. A lot of times I just take it off. I'll let the print shop worry about the sharpening. And that is pretty much it, guys. That's all my, it's not real complicated. Uh, I'm doing my editing workflow. So let's reiterate it. Let's go through a snapshot one more time. First thing we're gonna do is take the picture, of course, get the picture off the camera, move it to an SSD. That's where I do all my editing. From there, you're gonna organize your files, right? Organize my files by date and sometimes by what the subject was. After that, I go open up Fast Draw Viewer. In Fast Draw Viewer, I make two passes on a coal. Like the first time I do a pass, it's like, let's get the ones I don't want. Next time I go to the pass, take the next ones I don't want. From there, I do my organization. I right click them and I move them to folders. Or, I, I mean, sometimes if it's the same subject, I'll make one folder that says, you know, hot or, you know, five star something. You just call that folder something special. I'll have all the general shots that I think I want. But if I know some I definitely want, then I may put them in that type of folder. Anyway, after that, you go to DXO. You open up DXO, you navigate to the folder you want to process, click it, click to process the photos, select which type of AI you want to do, which is me as Deep Prime. Uh, do you want the two opticals? And I say yes, you can leave those checked or uncheck them. Destination folder, done. Import them in Lightroom, do your edits from there. Um, I'm not going to do a full editing, how do I edit this image? Because uh, right now I'm in the middle of changing the way I edit my photos and I, You know it happens about every six months to a year. I try to learn something new You know, I've been banging the edits out. I want to learn something new in editing So I'll buy somebody's course. I'll go talk to somebody. I'll sit down with somebody um, You know pay a professional somebody that's work you admire unless them have workshops and stuff go ahead and talk to them and and see how they do it and learn how they do it and then take it and use it mutate it to your own style uh, even what i've shown you here mutate it to yourself but that's it guys that's my editing workflow it's not hard it's very simple um, anybody can do it and then uh, send me the tips what you like to do within the editing how you want to do your workflow or how you do it i'd love to hear it um, until the next video guys stay safe and i will talk to you later